In this video we'll be replacing the batteries in this Enjoy uh, Cadu series uh, UPS. I will unplug it now just to show you the error that it's giving but basically the battery isn't holding at all. The second uh, this uh, doesn't have power from the mains uh, socket it went it goes directly off so uh, yeah it kind of looks like this if there's no uh, I don't know uh, devices connected to it but if I connect anything I will show you in a second what happens so from a somewhat normal state no battery error now let me turn on the connected devices yep instantly off so it cannot handle anything on its output. And sometimes, rarely, but sometimes it gives a battery error. Let me try and power it on. Maybe we can get that battery error. Nah, not possible. Let me try with an extremely low load. Maybe we can turn it on just for you to see the battery error. And yeah, that was it. Just beeping and uh, the battery blinking. And now disconnected all devices. Let me try and power it on again. Probably not even itself can sustain power. Yeah, battery is blinking. Disconnected uh, unit from mains, obviously. This one will have two internal batteries. Um, some of the UPSs in the Cadu series have two internal batteries, some of them have one internal batteries. You can find in the specifications on uh, Enjoy website exactly the replacement battery models. I recommend you get Enjoy batteries, they are not expensive and more or less they should be able to function a bit better with uh, their units uh, because they have exactly the right specs for uh, what the units they go into. But anyway, uh, for all cadus, you need to undo this screw right here. So I'll be doing that. While I undo it, this uh, battery is lasted for about two years, but this unit was in an environment that was extremely hot in the summer and freezing cold in the winter. So uh, no, uh, no protection whatsoever. Uh, from heat and that actually damages the battery life quite a bit. I think I should have actually while it was on the side I should have unclipped it from here. It has two clips right here at the bottom. I don't even remember exactly how they pop out so I need to investigate that a bit. More or less with a flathead you need to lift this from the clip itself. I'm going to hold this pushed forwards so it cannot latch again and do the same on the other clip and they are both unlatched don't pull on it too much you can actually damage it at this point up now the unit can come again right side up and uh, how was it in here i've had one of these units come apart more or less by itself because of some damage in shipping but uh, this one it's quite stubborn. Again, with a flathead, you can reach the clip area. It's right about where the lines are, and you need to lift the top part. But if you slip just a tiny bit, you directly damage the plastic. So do not slip. I'm going to also put this under the plastic in this area. This area I kind of need both hands. Uh, maybe you can also do it, uh, I don't know, with the side of a knife, but mm, don't cut yourself. And both of them are unlocked. Now this can come to the side. Warning. Uh, again, this needs to be disconnected. Try not to touch the contacts anywhere, so don't touch unisolated stuff. In theory, there shouldn't be high voltage at the, this moment. The unit is normally off yes if you want you can disconnect this uh, 
connectors just uh, pull on them both should uh, disconnect fairly easy they are just uh, for the button and uh, display ah actually this one we shouldn't disconnect because it's uh, <laughs> on the same board so it doesn't matter and now the batteries themselves as far as i'm aware if i directly tilt the unit a bit forwards they should simply slide out there's no handle or something like that on some other brand UPSs you have a handle on this one no handle so I'm just going to try and tilt it forward oh okay so in the one that was damaged in shipping they were coming out by themselves in this one they are not we need to see what's inside ah so they are kind of more or less uh, squeezed in there so there's a bit of uh, prying up to do presumably if we pull on this a tiny bit it will release them enough so they can slide do, do they have a bump in here hmm that's interesting so they might have a bump in here do we actually need to remove more and also remove the top cover again i will link in the video the one that was damaged in shipping and uh, the batteries were basically flying out of it by themselves more or less yes in this model uh, there's a different thing i think it's the 1000 watt model and that one damaged in shipping was the 1500 watt model or something like that we need to undo two screws right here to allow this to pry apart just a tiny bit because this plastic right here is pushing the batteries and they are behind a little wall interesting okay do not freaking touch anything on uh, that electronics pcb hmm okay i actually need to remove all four screws even the two in the bottom holes because as you can see these these columns uh, that go from bottom to top and are held together with screws are in front of the batteries so this cover must come off uh, that's a bit uh, yeah a bit complicated honestly but we need to take the cover off be really 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 careful about what you are doing ah, and one of the screws or actually both of them are not fully fully released so i need to work more on that be back in a second all four screws are out so now nothing is holding us back from completely removing the top cover but before doing that let's go to PCB way website as they are today's video sponsor and here we are on pcbway.com and they are specialized in uh, PCBs but they can uh, help you with anything from uh, the housing for your projects which can be done by CNC or 3D printing other more complex um, uh, CNC created parts uh, they can make all kinds of advanced uh, PCBs rigid flex PCBs and they can even do PCB assemblies for you so if you don't want to go to the hassle of uh, assembling uh, the components yourself they've got you covered and can ship you the full PCB and if you deal with uh, soldering and uh, desoldering uh, various chips they can also do SMD stencils for you which is quite nice so Let's get back to our project and thanks PCBWay again for sponsoring this video. And now we are ready to do this again. High voltage components treat everything like it is live. If you are not comfortable and you are, don't have experience working with uh, stuff like this, uh, take it to somebody that can because this is really freaking dangerous. Okay, and now we can put this to the side. We can see the huge transformer in the unit and we can disconnect uh, the positive I'm not sure what's the order positive or negative first positive is a bit tricky to disconnect oh negative also so I need both hands you kind of need to wiggle slowly and pull on it I simply lifted the batteries from the unit they are right here you can see the model number and right here I have the two new batteries and now we are ready to move this from old batteries 
two new batteries. <laughs> but same thing, wiggling is required and pulling quite hard on this to get it out of there. We can now remove the caps from the new batteries and I will actually put them on, on the old ones because the old ones uh, might still be somewhat usable for other projects. They might still hold a really tiny charge in them if needed. Now you just plug this in, again wiggling and pushing. And it locked and this one also locked. I heard a tiny faint click because they lock in these holes. You can see the contacts on the old batteries, new ones, brand new. Anyway, and now we can put this in place. Hopefully I will not drop them in the unit itself. Okay. At this point in time there shouldn't be power, but we still have some caps. Do we have capacitors? Yeah, we do have capacitors. So <laughs> be aware of those. Uh, they can still uh, pack a punch. And we can start to connect the wires. This one isn't quite reaching well enough. Eh, I can barely do it. I prefer to lift this with one hand, connect that one, and then we come with the top right back on it, making sure we don't get the wires uh, under this so they can get uh, damaged by the screws themselves. At this point everything is connected, one last check, batteries are in place, they cannot move, treat everything like it's live now, because we have connection from batteries. Uh, Everything should be just fine on the PCB. We didn't touch anything and slowly put everything back together. Make sure that everything goes in its proper location and we don't have anything sticking out or not allowing us to, call the, to close the cover itself and it's all good. So now we kind of hold it pushed, put it on the side and put back the four screws in the holes at the bottom. Now it's on its back, all four screws tighten. I can flip it and uh, we should be all good. <sighs> Again, make sure, really important, you do not catch any wires under this uh, plastic, uh, I don't know, extensions that hold the batteries pressed. If you catch wires under them, he will not be able to close this. So our next point, connect this thingy right in its uh, location. Cable is connected. At this point, I can press it in here. It latches. In theory, we can also press it down. It also latches down. Put this again on its uh, side and put the final screw, if I could actually see it, in its uh, hole. And now we should be good to go and uh, plug this into mains, but do not uh, try and run anything from it, allow it to charge maybe for one day or something like that, uh, because again, these are brand new batteries. Plugged this into mains and it remembered its last setting, so it powered on by itself. Shows uh, charged battery, but uh, yeah, I still I will still let it charge until tomorrow, just to be sure that everything is fine. And then it should work as expected and as it always did. And a day later, let me uh, actually not from here. Hmm. I need to unplug the UPS. That's the only way I can turn off the power and we are running on battery. And that's about it. So try to keep this at a normal room temperature, not too hot, not too cold or uh, the battery life will be diminished. But yeah, we fixed it. About uh, $5 uh, dollars, euros per battery, 
two of them and it's again up and running as brand new. Let's check the voltage of, of the batteries that we took out. As an idea more or less, not anything else. So 11.4, not great, not terrible. Wonder this one, are they both the same? Okay, so this one is actually a good battery, more or less, considering the voltage. This one had some, uh, something happen to it internally. So I will mark this as bad and this one as good. Or I could even try to charge this one on a, a car battery charger. Because for the charger itself, uh, it will see the charging curve. It doesn't really care if it's a small battery, big battery, whatever. And see what happens. Maybe it just got unbalanced and it wasn't properly charging because it's in series. And they were being charged in series. Although I think this is the bad one and this is the good one. But I'm going to try and charge it and see what happens. But this one, yeah, I still consider it okay for, I don't know, small projects that require 12 volt connected the charger but it's below the minimal uh, voltage where it starts to charge on one battery obviously on the second one the one that is uh, good it can charge this one without issues that was a bit weird doesn't want to charge it no, it really doesn't. Oh, the initial voltage was just too high. I think it's fully charged, so it cannot do anything to it. Yep, this one is fully charged. Okay, as I was expecting, it was actually plugged in. So, <laughs> that one makes sense. But this one, we have no freaking clue. It will trickle charge it, so it might get up to a chargeable voltage so let's see this one i need to make a check mark on it so i know it's good this couldn't do anything and i put it on this power supply it's drawing basically nothing it drew something 0 0.01 at uh, a time it went down to nothing if i will connect the proper working battery although a used one but still working you will see in a moment what it should be drawing it's instantly entering uh, constant current 0.1 limit that I set to not uh, overcharge this thing. So this is drawing, is charging. Now it went down a little bit because it's fully charged. But this one, absolutely nothing. So I cannot uh, revive this for any sort of uh, useful purpose because it's literally doesn't want to charge anymore. So internally it's messed up. And that's about it for this video. So, hope this video helps you. In which case, please give it a like. Check out my other videos. And as always, see you in the next one. Bye.